So what's the deal with Sire guitars? Who are these guys? How did they take the guitar world by storm? And are the guitars really as good as people say? Well, let's find out. Welcome back you guys and welcome to the first video in our Sire mini series. So over the next couple weeks, we're gonna look at each one of the Sire guitar models and find out are they overhyped? Are they appropriately hyped? So it should be interesting. So if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so uh, because yeah, we're gonna have lots of Sire content. Now, Sire is one of those brands that I constantly get messages. Daryl, can you check out a Sire? So I'm happy to say I've partnered with the guys from Sire. They sent over pretty much their entire lineup. So huge thanks to those guys. Obviously, I couldn't do this without them. So what we're going to do is meet the guitars. That's the exciting part. Let's check out uh, each one of these models. And then at the end, we'll talk about like who these guys are. How did they come to prominence so quickly? What's the company all about? Because it's pretty interesting. But anyway, let's jump in and check out the guitars. All right, let's get straight to the fun stuff and look at some of the guitars. Now I'll link to these in the video description below. You can check out the specs there and more importantly, the price. That's pretty incredible. Uh, they're carried by Sweetwater, which is fantastic news for those of us in North America. So here we go, let's check out the guitars. All right, so let's start with the S7s. On one hand, I have the S7 Vintage. So you got low output, three single coil pickups, volume, tone, tone, five-way switch, alder body, roasted maple neck, uh, rolled fingerboard edges, locking tuners, bone nut. <laughs> Fantastic, you know, take on that vintage S style guitar. And on the other hand here, I've got, just got to get a little closer just to look at this. I've got the S7, and this is obviously in the flame maple top. Uh, they do come in plain tops as well, but I don't know why you wouldn't pick one with the flame top. <laughs> and considering the prices are so reasonable, Lots of contours on the back there as well. So this version has a little bit uh, hotter output than the S7 Vintage. So they come with different pickups, um, but the rest of it's very similar. Locking tuners, bone nut, roasted maple neck, man, and a top just to die for. Now, as I mentioned, I'll be doing full demos on these guitars in the future, but let's just take a quick look at the models. So this is the T7. Here we've got an alder body. This is in butterscotch, obviously, black guard, uh, brass saddles, very traditional three-way switch. Nice little contour on the back though. That's really great. Again, satin neck, gloss on the front, rolled fingerboard edges, uh, bone nut, locking tuners. So that's kind of like the traditional T7. And then there's this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Might be the prettiest guitar I've ever seen. So gorgeous. Try to get up a little bit closer for you guys so you can see that flame. Uh, two point trim. Uh, pop-in bar, so a modern trim that actually works. Zebra coil pickups there, and again, roasted maple neck, rolled fingerboard edges, locking tuners, bone nut. So there you guys go, that's the T7. Well, now we're getting serious. After all, Sire Guitars did partner up with Larry Carlton, Mr. 335, so they better be able to do a good one. So we've got maple on the body, top, back, sides, uh, maple center block, uh, mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, bone nut, of course, um, all Sire pickups, so in-house designed pickups. Um, and just as a side note, in terms of Larry Carlton, and because it's December, I just gotta say one thing, it's not Christmas for me until I hear the album Snowbound. Once I hear Snowbound, it's Christmas. So if you wanna hear some sweet and sexy Larry Carlton lines, listen to that album. He's probably laughing if he sees this because it's probably not you know, on his top of his list <laughs> of all the things he's ever played. He's like, yeah, that Christmas album was okay. Uh, I love it. Anyway, so uh, that's just a side note. Um, but yes, uh, we will do a detailed um, review of this guitar, all the tones and everything in the upcoming days. Uh, let's go on to the next model. And finally, let's talk about the L7. Now there's one thing I wanna mention about the H7 and the L7. Both of them have binding on the fingerboard and both of them have rolled fingerboard edges. I don't think I've ever seen that on a guitar where somebody puts binding on and then rolls the edges. That's a lot of extra time and work, but man, it makes playability so nice on these two guitars. So that was the hollow body and this one with the binding. They kind of match their maple counterparts, not quite as rolled as the maple, but just enough to kind of like take that sharp edge off. So when you're sliding, you have your fingers over the top or you're muting with your thumb, very comfortable. We'll show some examples of that in one second. So here it is. Yes, love the headstock on these two, very classic looking. Uh, locking tuners, bone nut, mahogany neck, satin on the back. You don't see that on a painted guitar very often. 
that is a player uh, focused feature for sure. Uh, mahogany body, obviously this is gold top. They do have flame maple versions. Beautiful scoop right in there, rounded heel. Uh, makes getting up to, you know, playing in that A or B uh, a lot easier <laughs> for sure. And other than that, yeah, Sire pickups, custom pickups, all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, we're going to do some comparisons with these guitars, some tone uh, profiles and all that kind of stuff. But there you go. That's kind of like the main Sire models. All right, you guys, well, let's talk about one of the small things that Sire does on all their instruments and how it kind of stacks up and kind of makes a really great playing experience overall. So I'm gonna put a picture up here. This is from my Fender Player Series guitar. Now, take a look at the fretwork and take a look at the fingerboard edge. As you can see, there's no rolling on the fingerboard edge, just a sharp line all the way up and down the guitar, both sides of the fingerboard. And as you can see, the fretwork, I'm gonna just say it's not great. It's passable, but it's not amazing. Now, I'm just gonna take a shot of the Sire guitars. All of them are the same, except for the ones with the binding on it. So here's just a roasted maple uh, view of the Sire. As you can see, the fingerboard edge is just sublime. It beautifully rolled, and the fret ends are much more polished. Um, and just much more detailed and all the guitars are like this. So that's just a quick example of like a standard guitar that actually costs a lot more <laughs> versus the Sire and just the detail they put into playability because they wouldn't have to do that. I don't think there'd be many complaints otherwise, but it's one of the reasons why when people pick them up, maybe they couldn't even like describe what they're feeling, but they just know it's like supremely comfortable. And that all has to do with how they roll those edges. And I've been saying that, and I've been rolling my own fingerboard edges on Fender guitars and others uh, for years, because there's nothing like that, uh, that level of comfort for, for playing. So I think that's one of the reasons why people just pick them up and they're like, oh my goodness, these things play nice. The fretwork and those rolled edges just like, yeah can't be beat for sure. So anyway, that's just one small thing I wanted to show you guys. Obviously we'll get into much greater detail. I think I'm even going to do some teardowns on the guitars. Uh, like I do, I don't tell anybody I'm doing that, but I like to do it once in a while when I check out a new brand. So I'll pick one of them at random, tear it down when we do a, a review and just see what the internals are like too. Cause there's not much online about that, uh, in terms of pickups, pots, switches, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Now let's transition and talk about who these guys are, how they rose to the top, why everybody loves them. And yeah, just do a quick, like little company profile. Now, when I was prepping for this video and I wanted to find out, you know, everything I could about Sire guitars, I didn't contact the company. I didn't ask them for a profile or a history or anything. I just wanted to do my own research. So I found some old videos and podcasts uh, with Kyle, who's the founder of Sire Guitars. He's from South Korea and he started by building custom basses. He's a bass player and he kind of started his company like that. And if you're a bass player, I think you're more likely at least a year ago, you're more like, likely to know about Sire guitars uh, than any guitar player because the bass world blew up before the guitar world with Sire guitars. So he's a bass player, um, was building custom basses and started building for his friends, for other people who saw these basses. And yeah, decided, you know what, I'm going to start a company. And unlike most people in that day and age, and even today, uh, instead of going to an established factory like Court or World Music or Samic, you know, the biggest builders in the world, that's what most people do. You know, if you've got like a Fender or somebody like that, that wants to make Squire or, you know, whatever, you've got a top brand and you want to make a lower you know, overseas brand, you partner with one of these factories, they send you some samples, you're like, yep, whatever, and off you go. Now, what often happens is if a model becomes popular, well, you know, the factory A that you were partnered with uh, can't keep up. So you go to factory B or factory C in China or Indonesia and you're like, okay, I need like 5,000 more of these guitars. Can you make 2,500 over there? Can you make 2,500 over there? And then we'll keep our main factory going. And that's why you get inconsistencies in quality control. Or you may notice like, oh, this guitar was made in China, this one was made in Indonesia, this one was made, made somewhere else, and the quality control is kind of like that. You're like, oh, I got to get a guitar that was made in Korea. Uh, they're better than the ones made over here or whatever, right? You get all that kind of stuff because as companies need to make guitars and demand happens, they just split up the manufacturing to make up numbers. Now, when Kyle's company started blowing up, this, he, this was Sire Guitars. He had an earlier company that was based overseas in, in Korea. But anyway, when he started doing Sire, um, especially with the basses, you know, 
word got out and everybody wanted a guitar. So he had his own factory. He didn't partner with anybody. So he brought in his own people, his own factory. They don't make guitars for anybody else, only Sire. So that's the first thing I noted. And that was something he was adamant about from the beginning. He's like, we're gonna do our own thing, no partnerships, that way we have control. And that's why his guitars are so good. So anyway, yeah, demand for his basses went through the roof. Now, instead of going to factory B, C, D, E and trying to make up numbers, he's like, nope, uh, I'm going to sadly say people are going to have to wait. So people waiting for eight months, a year, a year and a half to get these bases. But he simply wouldn't increase production, even though the money was there. And that, I think, really spoke to his integrity um, because he just he, he built his company slowly even though demand was way up here, you know, he would only increase what he could guarantee would be good because he knew that's what was going to make or break his business. So that was uh, really impressive. So even with the guitars, um, you know, I'll link to them in the video description below. You're probably going to have to wait a bit. The demand is there uh, because these are excellent guitars. So that's the spoiler alert. Uh, these guitars are very excellent. So I was really impressed um, just watching that podcast with him. Um, in terms of how he structured his business um, and yeah, just how he focused on quality control, how he made his own factory, how even though demand goes skyrocketing, uh, he's just building slowly with his own people in his own place. So yeah, spoke really well of him and just his integrity uh, not to like immediately sell out as soon as like demand was through the roof like so many companies do. So anyway, that's just a quick profile um, of yeah, Kyle, and how he started Sire. He's a bass player, built up his bass business, uh, did some acoustic guitars. I've never seen or played those, but I think they have a pretty good reputation. And now, yeah, seemingly, even though it's been a long journey for him, uh, yeah, over the last year, this is suddenly everybody's talking about Sire. And there is a good reason for that. So anyway, that's just a quick comp uh, like little company profile. Uh, stay tuned to the channel because we're gonna be looking at these guitars uh, in pretty great detail. And again, as I, I said, measuring them up against what else is in the market. Thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned, over the next two, two and a half weeks or whatever, we'll feature all these uh, Sire guitars in great detail. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, hope you guys have a great week. Take care.